Today I'm talking about red meat. There were some controversial headlines reporting new guidelines, no need to reduce consumption of red or processed meat for good health. Confusing, right? Isn't eating too much red meat bad for you? I have some nourishable thoughts on these new guidelines. Let's science it. Hey, welcome to Nourishable, I'm Dr. Lara. First, how were these new guidelines made? A group of researchers and community members formed to look at the impact of red meat consumption on health. They published their analysis in the medical journal Annals of Internal Medicine. In the Annals, in the Annals, Annals of, keep on saying Annals. They published their results in the Annals of Internal Medicine. This research essentially compiled together many studies looking at the association between eating red meat and either developing or dying from cardiovascular disease, cancer, and type 2 diabetes. This style of research is called a meta-analysis. It allows researchers to compare many studies addressing a similar question to see if they consistently lead to the same results. Now, this was not the first meta-analysis to look at red meat and health. Previous studies showed an increased risk of cardiovascular disease, type 2 diabetes, and cancer, especially for colorectal cancer and processed meat. This led national health authorities to recommend eating less red meat, and the World Health Organization to classify processed meat as a known carcinogen. So what did the new meta-analyses show? The studies in the Annals of Internal Medicine showed that reducing red meat consumption is associated with a lower risk of developing type 2 diabetes and lower mortality from cardiovascular disease and cancer, and just lower mortality overall from anything. If the new results are pretty much the same, then why are the guidelines different? The difference is that this group considered the evidence to be low quality, therefore they didn't feel justified to recommend eating less red meat. They determined evidence quality by using a system called GRADE, which was developed to evaluate drug trials. The problem here is that drug trials and nutrition studies are fundamentally different from each other. In drug trials, you were either exposed to a drug or not for a defined period of time. It's much more black and white. When studying nutrition and chronic disease, you need to study populations for decades, deal with all sorts of lifestyle variables, and rely on people accurately reporting what they ate. So we end up with long-term observational studies, which have their issues, or shorter-term studies where you feed one group red meat and the other group something else, which inevitably aren't long enough to know the impact on developing or dying from chronic diseases. My nourishable opinion? I see that the research consistently shows better health when replacing red meat with alternatives like poultry, fish, and plant protein. Therefore, we are justified in recommending to reduce red meat consumption. A few other critiques. The researchers didn't evaluate the environmental impact of red meat. They considered it out of their scope. But the reality is we have to consider how our food choices impact the environment. Otherwise, we won't be able to produce enough food in the future. Beef production emits the most greenhouse gas and uses the most water of any kind of animal-based food. My last major critique is that the no need to change message is really deceiving. It suggests that our current dietary patterns are perfectly healthy, and that's just not the case. Almost half of all cardiometabolic disease deaths are related to suboptimal diet. Status quo is making us sick. Shifting towards more fruits, vegetables, whole grains, beans, fish, and less red meat, processed meat, added sugar, and sodium will prevent chronic disease. My take? These new red meat guidelines judge nutrition research in the wrong context. And by doing so, they generated sensational headlines that damages the public trust in nutrition. It suggests that we don't need to change our eating habits. In nutrition science, we know what healthy diets look like. They're built on a foundation of minimally processed plant foods, and they can include meat products, but more as a garnish rather than the star of the plate. Think of red meat as playing a cameo role in your healthy diet sitcom. That's what science tastes like. Thanks for tuning in to Nourishable. Check out my video description for all my references, leave me a question in the comments, and be sure to share, like, and subscribe.